Hello everyone and welcome to the GUI lectures or graphical user interface lectures. Make sure you read the lecture before this, the introduction to GUIs in Python in general. Um, there's lots of different options out there for choosing a GUI or a GUI. And the best one really depends on what you want to do. So if you want to do games or apps on mobile, um, some libraries such as either Kiwi or Pygame will be better suited for you. If you want to do applications that run on Windows and Mac, maybe PyQt is a better choice for you. If you want to build dashboards that take in information and quickly show it to users who aren't familiar with the Python language, something like what we're about to learn today, the GUIs with IPython widgets is super useful. So since you're already familiar with the Jupyter Notebook system, we're going to learn about how to use IPython widgets, mainly because one, they're very easy to use, and two, it's a nice leeway into future courses such as the Learning Python for Data Analysis and Visualization course. And another great reason for this is it makes it really easy for someone who doesn't have any experience with Python programming to go ahead and open up your dashboard or whatever widget you created and be able to use it without knowing how to program. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Before we begin, I want to make sure you know that at the Jupyter NB Viewer or on GitHub, wherever you take the notebooks from, there's a folder called GUI or GUI. If you click on it, it'll take you to the lectures for this section of the course, and we're going to start off by learning about Interact. Okay, so a quick note that the widgets in this notebook aren't going to be able to be rendered in NB Viewer or GitHub. To view the widgets, you'll have to interact with them. So you'll have to download this notebook either by forking it on GitHub, which you can click here, the link to take you to GitHub, or you can directly download it here by clicking on the top right download notebook link. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started by learning about Interact. And I think you'll be really surprised at how easy and quickly it is to create functioning widgets in a Jupyter Notebook. First thing I'm going to do is, from the notebook itself, I'm just going to copy some imports here. Edit, copy, edit, paste. I'm going to run this. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can get a better view. So we're going to import just print function from the future so we can be in line with Python 3 printing. And then for the widgets themselves, I'm importing from IPy widgets. I'm importing interact, interactive, fixed, and then I'm importing IPy widgets as widgets in general in case I want to get more stuff from that library. I can just say widgets. Dot. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with interact. At the most basic level, interact will auto generate a user interface or a UI control for function arguments. And then it calls the function of those arguments when you manipulate the controls interactively. So for instance, if I make a really basic function called, let's say, f, it takes in an x and just returns x. So it just returns the input it receives. Um, you can use interact so you can actually manipulate this. So when you pass this function into interact, you pass the function as the first argument, so I'm passing f as the first argument, along with some integer keyword argument. So in this case, you say x is equal to some integer. And we'll go over what happens when you input things that aren't integers later on in this lecture. But if we start with an integer, it will automatically create a slider for you. So you can see here, I've already made a widget just with one line. So if I run this, you'll notice I get an out cell here until I start playing around with the widget. If you want to stop that from happening, you can put a semicolon. And then when I run it again with shift enter, you'll notice you won't get an out cell. So you'll notice me using semicolons in this fashion throughout this section of the course. Uh, as I mentioned before, usually semicolons aren't needed for Python programming. But in the Jupyter Notebook setting, if you want to prevent that output cell from showing up and you just want to display the widget, you can use a semicolon to kind of kill that output. Okay, so when you move the slider, what we're doing is we're calling the function and it prints out here at the bottom the current value of x. So that's what happens when you use interact with a function and an integer. 
If you pass in a Boolean value, it's going to generate a checkbox. So the key thing to keep in mind here is that Interact will auto-generate different widgets depending on the type you pass in as X. So if you pass in here a Boolean, you'll get a checkbox. And you can close it here by clicking on that little X. So if you pass a string, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pass in a string called hello. Let me put some quotes around it to make it a string. It's going to get a little generate, uh, it's going to generate a little text area for you, which is really cool. So then I can say cool and it'll output whatever string you want. Okay. So you can also use these sort of um, interact functions as decorators. So go ahead and review the decorator lecture if you haven't done it yet. But once you've reviewed it, you can actually check out that we can use interact as a decorator. We just pass the X we want. And in this case, let's go ahead and define a function that takes in two arguments. So I'm going to also have it take in Y. I'll start with a floating point there. And then I'm going to decorate my function. So I'm going to make a new function. It's going to take in two variables, X and Y, and it's going to go ahead and return them. There we go. And now we can actually run these two widgets at the same time by merely decorating it. If we wanted to just do a single one, we could have done something like this. And as if you remember from the decorator lecture, decorating this is the same as doing this, just passing in that function of an argument here into interact, you can decorate it. So whatever you feel looks nice in your code, however you like to think about things, you can choose that on your own terms. All right. So hopefully we've seen now how powerful interact is and how automatic it is just for generating things. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and learn about fixing arguments. So there's times when you may want to explore a function using interact, but fix one or more of its arguments to specific values. And this can be accomplished by wrapping values with the fixed function. So again, I'm going to make a really simple function. I'll call it h. It'll take in two arguments, pq, and it's going to return pq. And now what I'm going to call interact, I'm going to pass in my function, pass in what I want to start p as. I'll start p as 5. And then q, instead of just putting in a number like 20, I'm going to go ahead and fix it. And I will fix it to the value by calling fixed to it. Now if you notice, we had to import this fixed in order for this to work. And let me go ahead and put a semicolon there so we don't get that output cell. And so now when I call interact, you'll notice I'm able to adjust the p-value here for my function, but 20 remains fixed on that output. All right, great. So now let's learn about widget abbreviations. And if this is going just a little too quickly for you, remember you can always review the Jupyter Notebook here um, everything I'm saying is written out, and you'll just have to download the notebook in order to play along with the functions. But keep in mind, there's a whole notebook here for you to follow along with, because I know there's going to be a ton of widgets and a ton of information. And also keep in mind that in a future lecture in this section, we'll have a list of all the widgets for you to reference. All right. But as I mentioned, widget abbreviations. So when you pass an integer value to keyword arguments, for instance, the 10 we did uh, earlier, the x equals 10 to interact, what it does is it generates that integer value slider control with a range. And in this case, if I scroll back up here, remember when we were passing in, if I pass in 10 here, we get this range. So this slider, we can actually call it specifically. So I can actually specify interact, call f here, and then from widgets, I can call int slider, and then pass in more specific arguments. This is kind of what it's actually doing automatically, 
But if you want more control, you can start messing around with it. So it'll take a min and a max. You can also specify a step size and then specify your starting value. And I need to fix that. It should be widgets, not widget. Sorry about that. All right. And you notice we get the exact same thing as when I called this automatically here, or for instance, automatically here. So here I'm calling interact f x equals 10. And I can do the slider. And what this is doing automatically is it's automatically calling widgets.int to your slider or int slider for you with these specific parameters, min negative 10, max 30, step equals one, value equals 10. So you can actually um, pass in those keyword arguments yourself. So hopefully this example clarifies how Interact processes its keyword arguments. So if the keyword argument is a widget instance with a value attribute, then that widget is used. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and jump to the notebook where you can see a table here that describes the auto-generated widgets depending on the argument you pass. So as I mentioned before, if you pass in a Boolean, some sort of true or false, you'll get a checkbox widget automatically generated for you. If you pass in a string, you'll get a text widget. If you pass in just a single value or a tuple of values or uh, a tuple of three values, min, max, step size, if they're either integers or floats, you'll get an integer slider or float slider widget respectively. And then you can pass in um, a list of strings or a tuple of strings, excuse me, and a dictionary and you'll get a drop down widget, which we'll see later on. So let's go ahead and start exploring these auto generated widgets a little more. So we've seen how a checkbox has worked. We've seen how a text area widget has worked. So let's go ahead and check out how the minimax slider with tuples will work. So I can say interact, call that simple function again, and I'm gonna pass a pair of numbers as a tuple here into interact. And you'll notice here, now it takes them in as a max and a min. So my minimum was zero and my maximum is four. So I can also specify as a third argument, step size. And you can review that table that I just showed you guys if you have, uh, if you need any reminders on this. So now you can see as I move the slider, I'm moving in a step size of two from zero to eight. So I have my min, my max, and my step size. All right, so we can also use floating point numbers. Let's go ahead and change the numbers up. Let's just put in 10. And in this case, I'll leave a step size to be automatically generated for me. You'll notice it uses a 0.1 step size for floating points, but you can also specify that. So instead of um, 0.1, let's say I wanted more precision, I could say 0 0.01 there, run it. And now you can see I get more precision as I move my slider back and forth. And in future lectures, don't worry, we're gonna learn how to connect all these widgets to user inputs and outputs. All right, so for both integer and float valued sliders, we could actually put this in as a decorator. So for instance, I could say at interact, and I'm gonna pass in this exact same tuple here. Decorate a function. Let's say this function starts at x equals five, or let's put it 5.5 .5 since we're dealing with floating points. It just returns x. Whoops, sorry, looks like I have an extra pair of parentheses on accident. Now let's run it, and there we go. Same thing. So this is just to reiterate the concept that you can use decorating with interacts. It'll make your code look a little cleaner, but again, totally up to you, depending on how you like to manage your code. All right, so finally, let's start talking about drop-down menus. So drop-down menus are constructed by passing a tuple of strings or a dictionary. 
So if I say interact, um, again, I'm going to call my really simple function f, which just takes an input and returns the exact same input. We've noticed that if I pass in an integer, it will create a slider. We remember that. But if I pass in tuples of strings, such as apples and oranges, then I get an automatically generated drop-down menu. And you'll notice the output is just that Unicode string. Cool. So I can also pass in dictionaries. So if I want a drop-down menu that passes non-string values to the Python function, then I pass the dictionaries. So the keys in the dictionaries are used for the names in the drop-down menu user interface, and then the values of that dictionary are the arguments that are passed to the underlying Python function. So for example, if I make my dictionary have keys, let's say one is one and two is two, semicolon, I kill that output. Oops. Messed up the string there. All right. Then we have a dropdown that takes in, notice how it's the key is what you see in the drop-down user interface. But the actual value to that key is what's getting passed into that function. So if I click two here, the two value gets passed into the function f, which gets returned. All right, so you can imagine we could make this a more complicated function like times it by two. So for instance, I could say, this function f takes in some number that multiplies it by 2 or puts it to the power of 5, etc. It would take this number and then do that function on it. All right. So last thing we're going to cover is using function annotations with interact. If you're using Python 3, you can go ahead and check out the notebook. It has a special notation for Python 3 where you can just use this sort of uh, widget abbreviation here. If you're using Python 2, you'll have to import using the annotate function. So let's just go over this in the notebook itself. So for function annotations, if you're using Python 3, you can define the function of a checkbox widget, just like the argument for the x here. So you can say x colon true, return x, and then you can just interact straight on that function because the widget's already been defined. If you're running Python 2, the function annotations can be used with the at annotate function. So you'll have to import this annotate, say at annotate equals true, decorate that function, and then you can call interact with just that function without passing that second argument. You can go ahead and read up on these in the Jupyter Notebook in case you're curious about them. All right. Really quickly, I want to mention one last thing, which is interactive, which is extremely similar to interact, but instead of producing the widget directly, it just returns a widget object. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and make a really simple function again. This function is just going to be f. It's going to take in two arguments, a, b. It's going to return a plus b. And instead of calling interact, I'm going to call interactive. I'm going to call it on that function. I'm going to set a equal 10 and b equal to 20. So you notice if I run this, I'll get the widget. But unlike interact, what I can actually do is set that widget equal to a variable. So I can say w is equal to interactive here. And if I check the type of w, I get what's called a widget box, which is essentially a box uh, container for other widgets. And then this box or this w object has other properties to it. It has children properties, which we'll discuss 
in another lecture. So here you can see it has two integer sliders within it, which makes sense. That's what we just saw. Um, and if we ever want to actually call it, we can just say from ipython.display import display and then we can actually just display that w object itself so with interactive you can save it to some variable name and when you want to pull it back out as a ui you can call display on it after you've imported ipython.display import display okay so I know we went over a ton and this was a pretty long lecture. So make sure you review everything we went over in this Jupyter Notebook. It's pretty thorough. Um, don't worry if you haven't been able to memorize all the interacts and interactives, what all the input arguments automatically generate. And don't worry too much about um, feeling bummed out that everything's auto-generated. There are a lot more options for personal control over things. And we'll, we'll be learning about that as this section goes on. But for this lecture, just make sure you have a nice understanding and feel comfortable using really basic interact and interactive function calls to create widgets. All right, that's it for this lecture. Make sure you review the Jupyter Notebook. It's called Using Interact, and I will see you at the next lecture. Thank you, everyone.